I think a massive eye opener because uh, I, and I think we all do over here, unless you're massively informed about America, we get spoon fed a lot of America and Americana in our media and especially on TV. And you kind of think, yeah, I know what America's like, I've got a handle on this. But when you visit the islands of a country, they're so different, but whilst being America, you know, the difference between Hawaii and Alaska is massive, and yet there's, they're actually linked by a route. There's a common route between them. Um, but yeah, they're as, they are so different, so diverse, and some of them are so beautiful. You get that kind of, you know, homogenized, most towns kind of look the same. There'll be a McDonald's, a Burger King, well, a bit like uh, London towns, but they're kind of more, they're bigger about them over there. And also their cities are much newer. So I think they're all sort of built along a similar template. But when you get out into the islands, people have, have to improvise or um, build out of what they've got there um, and make a life out of what they've got there. And they're all so different and absolutely fascinating. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. But they've got really good, crazy golf really good i'm thinking of turning pro the giant dinosaurs not just a little windmill like we get <laughs> uh it's really hard if i was having a series of holidays i could come up with which was my favorite because they weren't and they were all interesting I, it, it's really kind of hard to, i don't know if i had a favorite i re, you know i like them all for because we were making tv and they were all they all gave us plenty you know I, I was very, very taken with Kodiak Island in Alaska. That's very, really beautiful. And, and, but that's, that's imagery I have been spoon fed, you know, through various of those wilderness movies and whatever. And you see the, the seaplanes flying through the mountains and landing on lakes. We did all that and all that, but it's just, so the air is really clear, the lakes are really clear, um, uh, and it's very wild, very uncultivated, you know. Eventually, it'll it'll turn into an itinerary or a, a, a time. But early on, you cast a wide net, and we talk about this and we talk about that, and um, decide which islands we're going to do, which story, you know, which ones have the best stories. Um, but I'm not. Um, I don't have a producer's role, really. I'm just an idiot in front of the camera. I just love a sense of being away in the open air especially in the open air, especially on a coast, which you get obviously with islands, you get a lot of coast. But to stand, you know, somewhere the other side of the world from where I'm from and look out to sea, sometimes there's so much sea you can see the curvature of the earth and think, you know, the other side of this globe is where I usually am. And where I'm just soaking up the atmosphere in terms of empty space is quite a, I kind of suck in memories that way. I can, I can remember all the places where I've just stood and drunk it in. I don't really enjoy heights, <laughs> or I've had to do a lot of heights on this, or open air biplanes in turbulence, or I was on top of the Empire State Building, I didn't enjoy that, which is above the place where the visitors go, just at the base of the radio mast with a tiny handrail. That wasn't, no, it's a good view, but um, not a nice place to be. But unfortunately, I didn't get to ride, but they, yeah, they swim, it was very exciting and, and unique. They swim these ponies over from one island to another every year um, because they're, they're wild, feral ponies and they swim across and they have an auction and they sell them. And with the money they raise from that, it pays for their fire service. Really unique and, and well attended, even though it was pouring with rain. The water was full of people all around just watching it as these horses are herded into the water and then they swim with their foals at their side. Avery Island Tabasco Factory, yes, yeah, amazing, absolutely amazing. Beautiful to look at and beautiful product. <laughs> I've got a gallon, they gave me a, because they make a buffalo flavor and buffalo is the name of this company. So they, they sent us a, a gallon of Tabasco buffalo. Oh, I do make my own chili sauce a bit, but no, I didn't make any of theirs, but I tasted their mash that they, that it is the stage that they let it ferment at, or not ferment, but mature, whatever, 
before they turn it into the lovely juice and put it in the little bottles. I did get a taste of that. It was quite something. Probably not. <laughs> Okay, I'll tell you what's fascinating about Ellis Island now is that nowadays the word immigration has all kinds of connotations and they're all negative. Whereas this was a palace of immigration with beautiful, impressive buildings built to impress the people coming in. And there was, I think 98% got through. There was a sort of vetting process where they were asked if they were communist or homosexual or anything else, or, or a series of questions. And if they passed all those, then they had a, the, the flimsiest of medicals. But even if you failed the medicals, they had a hospital. If you had something treatable, they'd shove you around the back room and, and fix you, and then you were in. Uh, and that's quite, in this day and age, quite extraordinary. Uh, that was my experience on a on a very very fast old wooden roller coaster. Yes, twice, <laughs> two takes. Um, it, it was not enjoyable, but I, but it was one of the things I knew I had to do, and I could see that the crew were enjoying my discomfort. <laughs> Isla, I have a barrel up there with my name on it uh, at the Brucladi distillery when I did the I filled the barrel up with heaven juice when I, um, I was up there but that's about eight or nine years ago I did that now so it should be getting quite good every now and again I have a friend who goes up there and he brings me back a tiny bottle but I would love to go back up there I love it up there I was watching something on the telly oh no a friend of my daughter's we've been to Harris and I re it just reminded me of the good time I would had up there oh well that would be a good idea yes <laughs> oh, and I went, oh, when I was a kid, I went to Arran, and that was absolutely golden sandy beaches. It gets a bit of Gulf Stream, doesn't it, up there? On the, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, it was lovely. And Barra, I've been to Barra twice. Not many people have done that. <laughs> <laughs> Rude. Did you hear that, STV? I like Shetland and Oh, yeah, lovely, lovely. I've been to Muckle Flogger. That's the most northerly uh, piece of the island of the British Isles. It's a, now an unmanned lighthouse built by Robert Louis Stevenson's, was it his grandfather or his father who built the lighthouses? Anyway, the fella on the boat, it was so choppy, he didn't want to put us ashore, but we, we braved it and went on there and filmed it. And I've got a little stone I picked up in my bathroom. <laughs> I'm Martin Clunes, and you can see me in the islands of America. Watch it now on STV Player, or I'll kill this guy.